All right, welcome to yet another fabulous Sunday night news and nonsense. We are a day late and a dollar short. It is Monday night, not Sunday. So does that mean this is the Minner Report? <laughs> I think so. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still crying from last night. I was all alone. Spatch well, left me. I thought you were my friend. Well, the thing is, you sent me the message stating that, you know, you were on Skype. I got the message right about 10 o'clock, which is the usual time we usually meet. And then here you go. You already recorded the show without me. Ah! Yes. Well, I mean, I mean, well, look, I... We, we usually get on pre-chat, but you were busy, you know, splitting the atom, which I understand, you know, you and your new fancy schmancy atom splitter blender, but... Uh, oh, yes, and wait till you see my new titles. They are going to be coming out maybe sometime this week. I'll have an episode up, and uh, these new titles put my uh, old titles to shame. I might do a re-render on the main title, though, just, just for laughs and giggles while I'm at work tomorrow. Um, but, yeah, uh, I've been doing a lot of work with Blender, and uh, once I have uh, those uh, titles up, I'll probably be um, doing some little mini-tutorials on how I did some of the effects and that sort of thing that I uh, did with the title. So, I mean, yeah, I think it's really, really cool. Cool. And that sort of thing. So we got a lot of interesting news this week. Why don't and, you get us started? Shoot. Well, something that caught my eye, Linux Mint 13 has an OEM edition. Oh. And that has been released this week. And an OEM edition basically is a disk that they give to manufacturers so that they can pre-install uh, a given operating system, in this case Linux Mint, on a brand new computer and then when uh, the customer who purchases the computer uses it for the very first time uh -huh. okay then there's uh, a few little information screens they have to fill out such as uh, right. username the password and that sort of thing so this is a wonderful thing to be seeing in the news that there's an OEM uh, uh, release and another nice thing about this because it is based on Canonical's Ubuntu 1204 LTS, the precise Penguin. You called it precise perfection, something else. Uh, yeah. Because of that, they can expect to get five years of support. But then again, you know, uh, you know, you can always, uh, you know, upgrade to the next yes. uh, version. Right which is a feature I understand that they're now including in these distributions. So, I mean, that's a good thing, too. So, very good news. Good job, Linux Mint. I would have to agree. Uh, definitely no nonsense here. It's nice to see Linux, at least Linux Mint, going, going a, a little bit more mainstream for new users, newbies. I think it's terrific. So, you know Absolutely. what? I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, the next story is, of course, today, as we, as we are recording this Sunday night news report, jointly a day, night, late. On Sunday. One, yes. Uh, E3, the Electronic Entertainment Expo in L.A. And the big news, one of the big news, well, the big news for me is the Halo 4, which is to be released in November. They actually, I was able okay. to... Uh, Oh, shut up. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's a six-minute or so preview of the camp, and it looks movie-ish, blockbuster-ish, but Spatchy, wow. I just, I just, someone just emailed me a hot insider tip, but don't tell anybody, okay? <laughs> the mission of the Master Chief in Halo 4 is to eliminate all Microsoft viruses. <laughs> but that should put Halo into like Halo 24, so they definitely got that covered. But uh. yeah, well, yeah, then they won't have to run out of any plot or anything like that. But you know what? What's interesting though was, uh, um, I was, uh, I was uh, walking around in Target or Target, yes, yes. Uh, the other day in the electronics section. They had an Xbox set up and some racing game on it, and I was really amazed. Yeah, look, you know we sometimes crack jokes about Microsoft, but I'll give credit where credit is due. The Xbox 360 and the choices and the quality of the games, really Microsoft, I think, has done, has done a terrific job in terms of research, money, testing, quality of the stories, and, you know, it's, you know, I do, I do not play PC games either on Linux or Windows because the Xbox 360 handles everything, 
And for yeah. about 300 bucks or so, or even less, depending if it's on, I mean, like on sale, you have everything you need for a true high, high definition Hollywood immersive experience. So uh, with yeah. this, I, I think we are in agreement. Yes. Quite, quite a big uh, step up from what we had uh, years ago when we were kids. We had the Atari air hockey. <laughs> oh, and the the little the little tank game for those that couldn't afford the Atari thing, right, right, that right. sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> gosh, uh, I, yeah. I mean, I used to fight with my brothers over those stupid games, and I mean, <laughs> graphics were absolutely horrible. Right. Now, nowadays, uh, you know, these games uh, they have well. I mean, it's almost you know, it's almost like real life. Some of the yes. some of the epics and everything that they're coming out with, it's absolutely amazing. Pretty True. Soon, yes. Would be surprised if you pull a plug out of your gaming console, stick it in your ear, and then you really be immersed. <laughs> That's going to be the new uh, Sony ear smartwatch, or you know, stick it in your ear watch. Yeah, <laughs> yes. right. Yeah, yeah, right. You so know, just <laughs> shove it, just shove it in your ear, and then all of a sudden so, you're right. you know. All of a sudden, you're living in the game. Right, you know? 3D for real. Uh, right, yeah. Yeah, and then and then people who have those devices will uh, not be able to distinguish reality from fantasy. <laughs> well, a lot of people can't distinguish anyway, so they will feel right at home. <laughs> exactly. What else you uh, got? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, hot off the press from the Mukti uh website, we've discussed this before. Where there was a battle between uh, Oracle and uh, Google, and it turns out that APIs can't be copyrighted. And uh, according to the article, uh, Judge Alsop has ruled that APIs can't be copyrighted. This is a very important ruling, as it was feared that making APIs copyrighted would turn the software world upside down. So definitely. Uh, chalk one up uh, for the court system for making a wise decision yes. there. Now, if they could just get rid of, uh, you know, of, you know, because software shouldn't shouldn't be able, you know, they should, you know, they, putting copyrights on software and that sort of thing. This is going to hamper innovation, you know. And the thing yeah. is, you know, uh, you know, somebody, yeah, sure, somebody may, ha you know, putting patents on somebody's idea. For yeah. This and that, and this and that. I mean, you know, so, you know, lots of other people in the world out there. Uh, let's say I want to make a video editor, and obviously it's going to use a feature that somebody else made. Right. Thought, you know. Well, the yeah. thing is, it's still my code that I'm using to create this particular thing, which may be completely right. different from their code. Right. You know, and so I, I really don't think there should be patents on software at all. So chalk, chalk one up for the software industry. And uh, I'm glad to see that. So sounds good. Um, I have one more uh, story concerning Microsoft. Now, to be fair, be before oh, I really oh, no, here we go again. One more. <laughs> but you'll love this. You'll love this. Now, to be fair, I read it wrong. But this is what I thought I read. Okay, you ready? Microsoft patents blue screen of death. <laughs> but I read it wrong. Okay, Microsoft patents blue screen of death workaround. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it sounds better the first time. Ha ha ha! But I figured you would like um, this. But uh, anyway, I, that was the headline. But yeah, go ahead. There's a workaround to the blue screen of death. Apparently, what Microsoft has patented, it sounds great if it works. Maybe this will be like in Windows 8. But I guess um, a lot of the problems with the blue screen of death have to do with programming and drivers, and not necessarily viruses, which I guess makes sense. But they've patented a technology where it's like instead of plugging in your device and, you know, it'll work in one PC and not the other, it, apparently it's going to be, I guess, a little bit more more like Linux, just plug and play for everything. Uh, and if this really works, battery, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, more power to them if they can get it working. But... Um... Uh, will they get it working? Uh, I don't I, know. Hey, look, that's. I, first I read it wrong, and it was funnier that way. But to be fair, oh, it was okay. the workaround. So, but, but you know what? If it's truly what they've done, that's another notch for Microsoft. And one more, and one more thing about Microsoft. You can get, if you buy a new PC now with Windows 7, you will be allowed to upgrade to Windows 8 for only 15 smacks. $15. Imagine that. Clearly, to force this. Uh, 
operating system down people's throats, you know. Um, yeah. Or they might be worried and worried it may not be as popular. But I'll give kudos to Microsoft when they deserve it. Uh, at least if you download it and don't like it, you're only out fifteen bucks and not a hundred yeah. or two hundred. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I was just told uh, that uh, Microsoft has released another consumer preview, and uh, yes. you know, really, I, I wasn't really all that thrilled by the first two previews that I looked at. So I think I'm going to skip this next preview over. If I had um, a tablet, I th I think I would be more inclined. Yeah, to exactly. Since I don't. I mean, I may take a cursory look at it for my subscribers, but honestly, it really is designed yeah. for tablets. To be fair, it looks fantastic on tablets. Desktops, I think I'm convinced, but I'm not there yet. So. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. I th I think I'm going to pass that one up. Besides, uh, uh, I've got so much on my table right now. Anyway. Right. And, uh, uh, I have uh, a special announcement I'm going to be making within the next two weeks, and uh, I'm not going to say what that is. But, oh, please, uh, please, please spill the uh, beans now. Please, please. Uh, well, um, okay, I'll, I'll spill the beans. I'm actually going to be starting uh, a show on Blip TV. Okay. And, it's, and actually I'm going to uh, be, uh, within the next two weeks, I'm going to be uploading all of my new episodes up to Blip TV, and I'll have... Uh, and I'll have uh, links on my Yahoo pages, or uh, on my uh, YouTube pages, I meant to say, uh, linking people to uh, the newer content and that sort of thing. And that uh. show will, will be strictly multimedia from time to time. I may upload some stuff to YouTube, but pretty much I'm going to be uh, uh, following uh, along with what um, Jordan from This Week in Linux did. He moved over to Blip TV. He seems quite happy with it. Okay. And um, and uh, uh, I, I like the branding features. I um, you know I, I like the uh, you know the features and the layout and the way it's set up a lot better than than the changes that they have made to YouTube and okay. that sort of. Thing. So yeah, I think we're gonna cool. do something. Do some, so I'm gonna do a little bit more along that. But the thing is, uh, my uh, my viewers and subscribers do not have to worry. I'm still going to keep my show up on YouTube. And, uh, you know, I'll still be uploading content there once in a while. But, yeah, okay. I'm going to definitely be uh, doing a lot more with, uh, with um, Blip TV. And I've got some really cool new titles coming out that people nice. enjoy watching and that sort of thing. And I'm still counting down to episode 300. I already know what the show is going to be about, but I still haven't decided whether or okay. not I want to do it in 3D or not. Ah, yeah, well, the thing is, you know, I've just got a single core processor right. on this thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just, just to render out the title animation, which is only like uh, 17 seconds in length, it took my machine five hours to ray trace. Yeah, that's a little you bit know, too much. At, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. quite a bit. And yeah. uh, right now, I just can't afford to have a faster machine, so I have to work with what I've got, but I'm amazed at the results that I've been getting. So, cool. all in all, really good. You got anything else for us? No, just to say, I wish you the best of luck on yeah. Blip, and I hope it, you don't you don't turn out to be just a blip on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, uh, And on that note, Patrick, do you have anything else? <laughs> um, let me see. Is there anything else? Um, oh, yes, Linux three point five release candidate one. Uh, has come out, and it's a pretty normal release, roughly 60% drivers, 20% architecture updates, and 20% all over for file systems, documentation, tools, you name it. Nothing uh, hugely special. Yeah. Uh, there's some memory uh, compaction issue that's still being discussed, um, but uh, they don't think there's anything particularly scary or special that stands out over everything else okay. in the first release candidate. So we can expect to see uh, more improvements to the kernel. and uh, But that's no real news anyway. As an Arch user myself, I'm getting a new kernel, I think, once every week. Ah. And, uh, yeah. I, and, okay. uh, hey, what can I say? I love Arch. I, I, I think it's magnificent. And, cool. Uh, I really think you should try it. 
No, I'm 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 happy with what I got. And, and right now with Linux Mint 13, with the Mate, the choices of Mate mm -hmm. and Cinnamon, Cinemate, uh, that it's really starting to look <laughs> pretty nice. So yeah, Cinemate. Where's my coffee creamer? Spatter, you were supposed to send me some coffee. What's the matter with you? Oh, well, actually, right now I'm drinking some uh, high octane energy drink here gotcha. that um, uh, it's called DNA. <laughs> don't know what the DNA stands DNA. for. DNA. <laughs> DNA. Uh, don't. Something. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh. Um. Well, on that note, folks, uh, we will end it on, on that drinking note. But uh, <laughs> thanks for listening. As always, thank you, Spatry, for joining me tonight. A day late, but uh, a day late, day late. But at least, we, at least we had something to deliver. Consider so this the bonus video. How does that? Exactly. Uh, hey, 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 we're only a quarter instead of a dollar short. There you go. Spatry, there you go. Thank you. Thanks everybody for listening, and we will catch you as always in the future. Say goodbye, Spatch. Ciao. Bye-bye.